backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hi, everybody. Grizzly Award nominee for Guitarist of the Year 2020 is John Panzer, and he's my guest this week on Backstage with Mothership. He is the official guitarist for Fight the Fury, which is John Cooper of Skillet's Metal Side Project. He's been touring guitarist for Viridia, Disciple, and Manifest, among other rock bands in the faith-based music industry. I hope you enjoy it. So John Panzer the Third, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> saw you at the Disciple concert. You said you would do this, so here we yes. are. Awesome. Thank you for having me. You are the official guitarist of Fight the Fury with Seth Warson and John Cooper of Skillet. And who else is in the band? Um, and Jared Ward uh, yeah. uh, is, is the drummer. And Jared and Seth are cousins, fun oh. fact. Probably most people know that, but maybe not. All right. So, but you've played for like everybody. So tell me a little bit, kind of give us a rundown of who you've toured with and played for. Yeah, yeah. So I, I started uh, with a Christian pop band called We Are Leo. And from there, I moved on to Viridia, started playing with Viridia in 2016. I'm more touring guitar player. Um, Viridia would maybe say different, but I uh, am not in the photos, so... They, uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's the defining feature that's right the there. the defining thing. Yep. 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 <laughs> um, I played with Manifest in 2017, 2018. Uh, started playing for Fight the Fury in 2018. Uh, started playing with Disciple in 2019. Yeah. Just kind of been able, uh, been fortunate enough to work with multiple artists that I like and are great people. And yeah, it's been awesome. Didn't you play for Ledger? Yeah, played uh, just one show for Ledger. Yeah. All right, so you've played for her, but you didn't tour, do the whole tour. Okay, that's one thing about you is when you say John Panzer, and they're like, "Who's that?" But they know you. They just don't know your yeah. name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's it's not until like there's some sort of a reference point. You like that actor that's in every movie, and everybody know knows him, but they don't know his name. Yeah, I feel <laughs> that way too. <laughs> Am I making you feel bad? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I don't care if people know my name. You're just skilled. That's all. I, I mean, it's nice to make money and tour. That's that's my that's my thing. Or should I say tour and make money? Is that better? But I yeah. <laughs> not necessarily in that order. Yeah, not in that order, maybe. But I, I mean, I, I need money. <laughs> Do we not all? What's that like being a hired gun? Do you like doing that or you prefer having a home or? And there's pros and cons. Um, the pros are it keeps it very interesting because you're you're learning new songs, you're playing with different people, and it's just such a different thing. Like I would not bring the same energy playing with Disciple to any other band that I play for, like Viridia, for example. Um, they're more pop and alternative, and so like the way I emote on stage is different than with Disciple, and the songs are just very different like in terms of attitude and everything. So it keeps it fresh. Um, and it's allowed me to create a big community of, of people that I love working with. And then the con side of it, it's just, it's a scheduling nightmare sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like trying to keep everything in order. And I'm pretty ADD wow. and I double book, tend to double book myself. I've gotten a lot better uh, in, in the recent years, at least when concerts were happening. That I would say is a con and just, when you find a home, it's like a very central focus, I guess, mm -hmm. when you're in that gig. Um, yes. And sometimes that happens. Like I'll be in one gig and I'll only do that gig for months and months at a time. And there's been times where I've only toured with Disciple for five or six months. You know what I mean? So it's nice to have like one home and just stay in that lane and just know what you're doing. That would be the pros. So it's up and down, but I just I wouldn't trade it. I, I do love what I do and it's been fun so far. Well, you started with Fight the Fury, and did you get a tour in? John and Seth made the EP. I came in on the very, very tail end of it and did a guitar solo on the, the last song called Lose Hold of It All. And then the EP was released shortly after that. We did a few shows in December of that year to kind of get our feet wet. And then uh, in spring of 2019, we did a tour with Under Oath, uh, Skillet, and Breaking Benjamin, which was an awesome tour. Yeah, we haven't done shows since. Skillet went to 
I think they went they went to Russia, I'm pretty sure, right after um, that tour. And they just went nonstop, nonstop until the pandemic happened. So that was the last time we've been able to play shows, unfortunately, with Fight the Fury. Now, is Fight the Fury the first band that you've been official with or have you been official with someone before that? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the first, I would say, official gig was We Are Leo. I'm defining it in the sense that I'm in the music videos and I'm in the photo shoots and, and things like that, um, just to, to clarify for people. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah, We Are Leo was the first and then Fight the Fury is the second. OK, so now I'm having to think back. I hosted We Are Leo at Chili's in Atlanta when they were at Atlanta Fest. You weren't in the band then. I was not in the band. Okay. I was going to say, oh, my gosh, if I forgot that we were in the band, I'm going to feel horrible. (laughs) No, no. That's, gosh, I I mean, I feel like my look changes once a year or so. You wouldn't recognize me anyway. Um, But I I think um, I wasn't with them. I, I joined shortly after that. That was probably summer of 2014, maybe. Doug Weir is, is still a great friend of mine. He's one of my best friends, actually. And we keep in touch fairly regularly, not as much as we'd like to. He's got mm-hmm. children and is extremely busy doing mixing engineering work full time. He is a beast. Shout out, Doug. Well, tell him I said hi next time you talk to him. Yeah, so. I will. I will. So I've heard some things about you. So you have to elaborate for me. Sure. That you're funny, hardworking. And of course, we all know you're talented. You, are you class clown? Are you a <laughs> prankster? What what is this I'm hearing? Maybe those things are true. I don't I don't know. But I uh, <laughs> I I do like making people laugh. It is definitely especially when I get in a group, the guys on the bus or whatever. Yes, I definitely just like to have fun. You know what I mean? Life is heavy sometimes, and it's it's nice to laugh. So I love having. Well, you a look good time. so serious on the stage. Yeah, <laughs> I get that a lot, actually. Like, you know, you're like in a zone. Like, yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. I just I feel a level of intensity <laughs> on stage that I just like I, I just feel way more intense and, and serious on stage. And I, it's just a focus face, really. That's all. <laughs> but I yeah, I do. People have said you're very hardworking. Try to so, be. Yeah. Yeah. One thing you can't be if you want to be touring, especially when you're up and coming, is you can't not be hardworking. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, if you're going to be there and be, be in the shuffle or be in a rotation of, of a band or an artist, you know, you have to build a reputation of somebody who's willing to work hard and obviously play and look good on stage. And I guess, you know, that's been something that I've been able to uh, facilitate, which I'm, I'm thankful for. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. This hour is being made possible by our business ministry partner, Anchor Bolt Express, the place for construction fasteners and a supporter of Christian music and this station. On the web at anchorboltexpress.com. So where do you store all those songs for all those different bands? <laughs> oh, I don't you know. What? And it, it's really it's really funny because I don't store them sometimes. Like <laughs> sometimes I just I, I will remember bits and pieces maybe, but like for example, I mean, I can't even tell you how many shows I did with Manifest. Like, if, if Chris called me tomorrow, I would have to relearn all the songs. I'm just kind of like that. Like, once I get a feel for it, I could pick it up extremely quickly, especially, you know, muscle memory comes back and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I really just try to focus on the tour that is upcoming or, or, you know, the songs that I have to play in the moment. That's how I run my own life. I have to delete memory. I don't have enough storage. I don't either. I, yeah, I don't either. I have a hard time trying to make that better, have more capacity for, for those things. That makes me feel better. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Obviously, very talented. You can just pick up anything. What made you pick up a guitar and how old were you? Great question. I was... 13 years old. You're not going to believe this because I don't really. <laughs> but, uh, I was 13 and uh, I went to see Skillet live. That got it started for me. Ben, who used to play for Skillet, was in the band at the time. And I went. He looked cool. He was shredding. And it was just the energy was so intense from the band and from the crowd. I'm like, I want to do that. So I actually wanted to perform before I wanted to play the guitar. The guitar was just my vehicle to performing. And it's still, I still feel that way, honestly, because I I like gear. You know, I do like gear and I can talk about it, especially I get in a room with some other guitar players, whatever, we can talk about a bunch of stuff. But really, my passion is not playing fast or getting the next greatest tone. I just want to get on stage and put on a show for people. Um, and it started there. So that's your calling, basically. God's called you to be on stage, to perform, to minister. I, Yes, I believe that very much. Yeah. 
Well, I love me some Ben Cassica now. He uh, is uh, the person who asked my daughter to draw pictures of Skillet for their podcast art. Oh, wow. And, and um, Corey Cooper uh, both kind of mentored her and used her artwork and encouraged her. I actually email him. Every life event she had, I emailed him because Aww. she is now the manager of a graphic arts department of a company. Wow. That's and, so cool. And that is kind of part of why I am where I am yeah. is some of these things that have happened over the years and the fact that they invested in her and gave her a direction for her life. So, yeah, they hold a special place in my heart, too. Yeah, it's same, same. I would not be talking to you if it wasn't for Ben. I don't talk to Ben a whole lot these days. There's just no doubt that um, building a, a relationship with Ben, he just has this air of like mentorship and discipleship and just is really, even if it's just for a season, somebody who comes alongside you and encourages you. And he's somebody who really took action and invested in my life and invited me up to visit him and the church that he was a part of. And it just kind of all led to mm -hmm. what I'm doing now, ultimately led to playing with John's side project. And then how was that? When did you get that call? Uh, yeah, I mean, John and Seth had been working on Fight the Fury for years. I can't remember when they started on it, but probably like 2013, 2014, I think. Once it was like, all right, let's really get this thing going. They're like, oh, we need players. And, and Seth and I have become very close. Seth is somebody I talk to almost every day, honestly. We, we Marco Polo. Do you know what Marco Polo is? Yes. Yeah, we yeah. Marco Polo back and forth like all the time. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, we had become closer friends and had known each other since he had joined the band, but had kind of become closer. And I was already going to church with, with John and Corey and Jen. And, um, so they, they knew of me mm -hmm. and Seth recommended me. And I got a text from John one night and said, hey, would love to talk this week if you have time. Of course, I had time. And uh, yeah. The 14 year old inside of you was screaming. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> He has uh, profoundly impacted my life um, mm -hmm. just by his example yeah. and, and who he is and how just unashamed he is for his faith. And so to just be involved with him in even a small way, working for him in Fight the Fury, it's a really cool thing and definitely an honor. Awesome. Well, you were nominated for a Grizzly Award for guitarist. Yes. What kind of an experience was it? It was... Uh, yeah, it was it was really cool. You know, there's a lot of people that not only I've, I've worked with, but even people I haven't worked with, but just respect, um, you know, nominated as well. I, I grew up and see things like the Grizzlies just to be nominated is another dream come true in, in a sense, because it's it's just like a it's cool to be recognized. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's uh, the point of it is there is so little recognition in this particular industry. And that's one of the things that drove this to happen. And yeah, uh, I've just been overwhelmed by the response of the artists who are just overwhelmed themselves. It's like, hey, people notice we're around. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, the it's, fans it's, have it's, loved it. Yeah. And thank you to, you know, the, the people that, that voted for me and reached out and said they voted. It means a lot. Just a really cool to be amongst those people. And gosh, I wish I could have showed up to help out in the ceremony. I just, I, I actually had a gig that day, which I was thankful for, but was bummed to not be able to be, to be there. Are you saying you overbooked? No. I'm saying overbooked, which is just <laughs> classic. Thankfully, this time it was, it was just a matter of I had already had it, that gig on the books, and thankfully I didn't say yes to Joel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you another time. <laughs> yeah, but yes, I'm all in 2022. All right. I hope we're all all in 2022. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a big old in-person party. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's go. So what's next for John Panzer? Well, I, I mean, there's just loose plans. You know, every band that I'm involved in, um, I think we all feel pretty confident for stuff, especially in America, um, you know, being able to tour again is, is happening. I mean, there are states that are now opening up daily at full capacity. So we'll see what happens. But there's things that could happen if this pandemic will get out of the way that I actually shouldn't say anything about just yet. Mm -hmm. But all right. Hopefully some exciting things uh, will will take place this year. OK, we're going to be looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you can keep up with me on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> You're listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. We really mean rock. The music I like. Solid Rock Radio. Skillet. It's all resistance. 
What is your favorite genre of music? Great question. Great question. I think it varies like day to day, but I guess if I had to make a decision, I would say heavy music for sure. The emotion and and release from just heavy music, uh, especially like bands that are doing it nowadays that have that like modern polished metal type of sound. I just love that. But a very, very close second is like dark pop. Just love like moody, alternative and, and pop type stuff. It's just, yeah, like the neighborhood. Uh, if anybody's familiar with the band Love the Neighborhood. So when you're chilling, is that what you're listening to? <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I've been listening to a little bit more hip hop recently. Um, I'm just very selective. And that's the thing about my music taste, too. I find like four, five, six bands, artists that I listen to on rotation. Once I find my thing, I'm all in. But that's probably, uh, there's a bad side to that. I'm probably missing out on a lot of great music. I just don't explore because I don't, I don't put in the energy to do it. I just, I get in the car and I, whatever I played last, I'll just play it again. (laughs) There's so much good music, but so little time. I know. I know. know. It's a shame. It is. I like hearing new bands, but it takes me a long time to, to really latch on to that's the thing. I mean, I've come across bands where it's like, oh my gosh, this song is incredible. And then I go and I listen to their other music and it sounds nothing like <laughs> that song or it feels like a departure. And then I'm let down or, you know, normally I'm like, if I listen to three songs and I like them all, I'm like, okay, I'm in. You got me and, you know, I'll, t- I'll tune into what you're doing. But few bands can do no wrong in, in my mind. And they're the ones that I just keep going back to. Yeah, same here. Being an older person, I have a harder time with the streaming thing because I, you know, I grew up in the day where you put on your LP, your vinyl, yep, I and have you went, yep. you played the A side, you know, uh, over and over and over, you know, and and I went through LPs, I went through eight tracks, I went through cassettes, I went through CDs, and yep. now we're streaming. But to me, it's just the streaming is so disjointed. There's something about listening to an album. I just mentioned this when I was talking with T.D. Benton from White Collar Sideshow. Something about listening to an album from the beginning to the end. It seems like they've recorded it for a reason in a certain order. And yeah. you miss something if you don't hear the entire thing. Yes. I, yeah. And there's there's some albums that, that that's more so true with some albums than, yep. than others. But, right. but I feel like the bands that I listen to are, are in that vein of, of yeah, you, you really would like to listen to it in order to kind of get what they're trying to convey or maybe get, you know, the peaks and valleys of the album. And yeah, I think some albums are definitely meant to be enjoyed that way. I, I have a um, I have a record player out there. I have vinyls out there. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. My, my parents own an audio shop in Baltimore called Just Audio. And that kind of stuff, they have new and vintage audio. And I just, I do love the vintage side yeah. of it. Who's rap. one of your favorite, like 70s, maybe rock or something? I mean, Led Zeppelin. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Aerosmith, 70s, right? Yeah, Aerosmith is pretty much 70s. I grew up in the 70s. That, that was my high school years. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing Yes, the band Yes live. Mm-hmm. My brother they, loved them. They were awesome. Peter Frampton's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, I, I just, I love Aerosmith, and I do love Led Zeppelin. Led sure. Zeppelin just had such depth. Yeah, they just did something that, that nobody else did. To be honest, I'm not, like, overly plugged into that era of music, mm-hmm. but... They just feel like they came out of the 70s as the cream of the crop. Yeah. Yeah. And they had a swagger that, you know, few mm-hmm. people had, like everybody in the band. But Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, just like they had swagger. <laughs> they did. It stands up to the test of time. You could just yeah. let somebody who doesn't know that it's from the 70s listen to it and they'll still like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cashmere, honestly. Oh, is, I was going to uh, say Cashmere. One of it's the best. Perfect. It's so heavy. It's so heavy and dark, and it's not heavy truth in the sense that most people would say today, but it's just got this, like, ominous feel to it. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's so good. How have you handled the pandemic personally? Fair, I've, I've handled it fairly well. Um, it's uh, certainly frustrating. I mean, for multiple reasons, but, you know, just you feel like you're in a groove of life, and um, it's gone like that. 
you know, which everybody can relate to, I'm sure, to some extent. What is getting you through it? God has been amazing to us. And, uh, the fans that are out there that are fans of the bands that I work for have just been like absolutely incredible and supportive. It's been good. I have a job that, that keeps me busy that, you know, I work from home and, and I do sales. And that's something I'm very thankful for just to one, make a living and two, just uh, to keep my mind occupied. And, and I've been trying to just grow through this time, like really uh, increase my work ethic and increase my capacity, like we were talking about earlier. So I was thinking about this yesterday. I actually think I'm much better man on the other side of this than I was going into it. That's a blessing. Not to get overly spiritual, but I do want the Lord to refine me, and um, He can use these things to make us who He wants us to be. And and uh, I feel like He's done done a work in me through this time. So that has got me through. My wife has got me through. My new puppy has got me through. Yeah. You can see some pinholes of light now at the end of the tunnel. And um, we're, we're all running towards it, I think. Yeah, we are. What kind of message do you have for your fans out there? Maybe somebody that might be struggling? Well, I mean, my advice, I, I'm not sure, but maybe a good portion of your listeners are at least know about God, the Lord or church or whatever. I would just encourage people out there to genuinely seek the Lord and seek him diligently. Just watch what he'll do, especially if you're, you know, if you're feeling beaten by what's going on in the world, the virus, the unrest, the political climate, all that kind of thing. Like this isn't news to God. He's not shocked by any of this. And uh, regardless of what's happening, he's in control. I have found tremendous peace in saying that to myself every now and again. Yeah, I would encourage people to do the same. Awesome. Well, we're hoping to see you out on the road soon. Yes. One of the things I ask my guests each time is, what is your favorite road snacks? Anything and everything. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> that I, narrows it down. Yeah, I know. I'm not a picky eater. I'm trying to think. We, on the Disciple Bus, we eat a lot of cereal. Um, so, like, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is big. I've been trying not to partake in that, like, sugary cereals and stuff like that. So, fruit, banana is big. But, yeah, every band that I play for, we always get taken care of really well. On the Disciple Bus, people are always bringing after show food. So, like, pizza is probably my favorite, but it's it's my vice. <laughs> 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 it's my point. It's just so because like you get on stage and you burn just a million calories and then you're just starving after the show. You're starving. And it's like, man, I can eat seven pieces of pizza and then just go to bed in my bunk. But that's not <laughs> conducive. That sounds to a really place. good right now. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm about to eat dinner, but it's going to be grilled chicken and spaghetti squash. Not sounds delicious. For those out there who have not tried spaghetti squash, get on the train. You heat up the squash. You cut it open, and it's literally like spaghetti noodles in there. And it's an amazing replacement for spaghetti. It's so good. Cool. I'll have to give that a try. Just leave you guys with that little pro tip there. <laughs> there you go. Well, I thank you so much for taking some time out tonight. All right. Well, let me let you go get your dinner. I hope to see you on the road yes. really soon. Yes. It's great to see you. And, yeah, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening tonight. Stay tuned for more great music all night long. Be sure to check out my I'm With Mothership Facebook page and Solid Rock Radio's website. Follow the link under Shows to Backstage with Mothership, which will have the links to my guests' social media accounts. This show will be replayed at 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Past interviews available on podcast.solidrockradio.org, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on Pandora platforms. And remember this week, be kind to one another.